Hello everyone, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. Uh, it was really funny about this before I get started, is that this series has uh, garnered a lot of support in my personal life. Uh, not so much with the YouTube side of things. It is a departure from my typical wheelhouse, so not every viewer has been going. Obviously, those who have you're watching this right now thank you i hope you stick around but like as i told you in the first one caleb really recommended this to me my friend caleb so he's really excited to see how it goes i did neglect to mention that uh also brie also really wanted me to play this game and so she like flipped her fucking lid when she saw that i was doing it so she's really excited um and just uh, general variety is enjoyed uh, so, I think, yeah, let's just go. Let's just do this shit. The gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, the gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. Mm -hmm. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like but couldn't really decide, probably, no. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. Oh, Jesus. I think I've seen this place. <laughs> so I... This is really looking familiar. You know what, I'm just gonna move on. Mm-hmm. So I walked towards the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone, so my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. Does it feel like the kind of grounds a school would have? More like a park, with a clean walkway going past trees and the smell of fresh cut grass and all other park-like things. Words like clean and hygienic pop into my mind. It makes me shudder. <laughs> fucking, why would the school filled with sick fucking people like things to be clean? I shake them off. Stayed open-minded now. It's your new life. You must, you have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. And I am an expert in schools. I've studied th at them. It's an uncanny valley. I thought it was a park. Now it's a valley. What the fuck's going on? Even though I was told this is my new school, in the back of my head, it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. You know, the lack of a ramp. I see a lot of fucking stairs for a school for disabled people. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kind of eerie. Yeah, yeah, that would freak me the fuck out too. It makes me wish that there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. Enter someone, probably. Ah. Oh. Oh, uh, there's, there's, there's someone gonna pop up really soon, I'm fairly certain. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. Makes me think about hospitals again. How they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a calming color. So why am I feeling so anxious despite all the, this greenery? Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back. Even if I had no life, I could return to. But still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Gates only work in one direction, as you know. They just open, and then when they're closed, padlock forever just fucking soldering just fucking yeah they're fucking solid steel you can't get oh through around under none of that shit force field i'm taking this way too long 
Feeling nervous, and with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I don't like this. Something- I don't like this. Why is there a checkerboard on the wall? A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. Wow, we're being really fucking judgmental, aren't we? We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. Oh no. What? Ew. Okay. This guy looks creepy. I don't like him. Tall man. You must be need ne Niki? Nakai. Nakai. Na Nakai. Na Nakai. I don't fucking whatever. So you are. Excellent. I'm your whole room and science teacher. My name is Muto. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and he looks at his watch. The head nurse asked you for a brief check-in visit, but there's no time for that now. Oh, should I go later? Yes, afternoon. After fuck. Yes, <laughs> afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. We're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like the being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the rest of to the to the class? What is wrong with me? Uh why or of course? Uh uh, what, what would be the problem? Sure. I'm curious why I would say why. Is there... Okay, there is back scrolling. So let's let's say why. Just because I'm confused. Why? Do I have to? Of course not. That's why I asked. Right. Let's go then. Oh. It doesn't let me do the choices? You fucking, you sour Sam! I will not let you fucking, you will not steamroll me, motherfucker. I've played way too many of these things. I guess we really have to be very certain about the choices we make in this game. That's good to know. That's a, a, a mini fucking covert tutorial right there. So, oh. It remembers? Oh, I don't like that. That's creepy. Ugh. Of course it remembers. Even in other games where it doesn't show that, the whole skip scene text thing, they, of course, they remember. Oh, fuck. I don't like being constrained, but it does make it a challenge because the whole idea, what I've heard, is that there are certain paths in this game where, like, it's really easy to fuck it up. And if you could just unfuck it, not really making you live with the consequences of your actions. So this is a game where you cannot unfuck things. Man, I should really <laughs> have consultation on this. I don't know. Oh Jesus. You know what? No, I fucking I will do what my what I want to do. Yeah, sure. I mean, isn't that normal? I gotta fucking live by my actions, as it were. Of course. But not everyone likes to be at the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Right, but it's no problem. Oh, shit! That was us! Right, but it's no problem! Let's go then. My heart is pounding. Not good! That's a problem! In my chest, and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. The third door down, the third door, the fucking kill me. Just fucking, just fucking kill me. The third door down, the third floor corridor is marked as the classroom for class 3-3. Three, three. See? If I don't try, I, I oh, fucking Christ. Muto opens the door and enters. Ah, what the hell is that? I don't like it. I don't like it. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late again. 
Hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Get a grip, this is a big step, I know that. But there isn't any point to worrying so much about it, at least not this soon. Oh, look at our peoples. Alright, let's take a quick survey of the room here. So in the... Uh, Alright, so we have in the back left... I wish you, you could see my mouse. You know what, fuck it, I'll, I'll do the thing I did that one time. Strawberry will be my mouse. So we got person over here who has a fucked up eye by the look of it. I don't know these people, so how the hell would I be able to fucking offend them intentionally? So we got fucked up eye person over here. Uh, what's going on with this person? Uh, we don't... Uh, they're in, uh, I don't see what's wrong with them, so they must have a non-visible thing. This person has a really fucked up eye because they're not even showing it. This person has a cane, so we can see that. They also got their legs crossed, so I don't know what that's about. Then we come over here to Miss Prim and Proper, who appears to have a fucking- Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Who appears to have a fucking club hand. I don't know what that's about. Uh, then we got Dude here, who uh, looks uh, like he's either sneering or I don't I don't know what the fuck that expression is. Honestly, I want to expand the fucking window. That's what I want to fucking do. I can't. Good. I have to look at something very tiny. Oh no! It looks like he's fucking smiling nervously. So maybe he's got like a nervous tick. Uh, then you've got. Uh, dude with a hat here who has a fucking band-aid on his head. Make that as fucking visible as possible. You got person here who uh, has a headband, so that automatically makes him a sympathetic figure. Um, you got this slumpy Magoo who um, looks like they have huge tumors on their arms, so maybe that's their disable disability. Then you have a uh, person over here, uh, Ethnic Query, who has a very, very skinny arm. Like, very skinny, disproportioned arm around the elbow and a uh, wrist uh, bandage, which instantly makes me fucking nervous. I don't want to live through more of that shit. So I'm just going to put Strawberry over in the corner in case I need uh, fucking help again with Cursor. But let's bring back the fucking text and see what we're dealing with here. I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around, partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. It's pretty spacious, the ceiling is unusually high and there's lots of space left uh, over around and in between the desks. Makes sense. The entire wall is taken up by blackboards and the high old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. The students' desks are just standard wooden desks with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. It's simple, but efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal, like students at any other school. But then why would they be here? They're probably like me and have something wrong- OH SHIT THERE'S MORE! There's something wrong with them, but it's only it's not immediately obvious. Then, I noticed that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb on her right hand. It's a little jarring. Alright, what the fuck? What the fuck is that guy? Okay, I'm gonna wait. Okay, so I'm seeing uh, Snooty Magoo, uh, nothing visible so far. Uh, person back, not seeing anything there. What the fuck is that guy? What the hell is going on with them? Um, this person's obviously got a hair disorder. This person must have a sleeping problem. Uh, this person looks like a villain. Uh, so fuck this guy. She looks like she is possessed by some sort of voodoo thing. Uh, also, I think she's missing an arm. Oh, shit, her fucking legs. Whoa! Okay, yeah, that... Yeah, did not notice that at first. Uh, so she's got... Prosthetic legs, and I think, uh, maybe an arm, uh, and, uh, by the looks of her eyes, no soul. Uh, so there's that, and I guess we're gonna be sitting over here by the window, um, right next to the villain, uh, and, uh, hair plant, uh, hair carrots. So, oh, wait a minute. 
I'm just noticing this about the sleeper, a uh, little knee brace. So there's 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 small things to notice if the disability is indeed visible, which much like mine, uh, other than the fucking weight, which is very visible, uh, and that's not a disability. Um, it's a it's a problem. It's a medical problem, but it's not a disability. Um, I don't know. Would it be? I don't know if it's counted as one. I don't know. But either way, uh, um, my actual, so far, disabilities uh, are definitely non-visual, so I can sympathize with this uh, appraisal. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone's talking to you, I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with really long, straight hair that is pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking back at her, she covers her face with her hands as, she, as if it'll make her invisible. There's one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers, over, she peers at me over the rims of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. Kind of cute. So is the cheery looking girl with the pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her in the moment I walked in. Please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands and so does everyone else, except one girl in the front row who has only one hand. Hey, yeah, he's got that right. Cringe a little, but I did by bowing and thanks for this applause I did not deserve. Collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. So, uh, I'm Hisao Nikai. And after that, my hobbies are reading and soccer. I hope to get along well with everyone, even though I'm a new student. And after that, I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self-introduction ever. I should say something more, something more exciting. And I'm saying nothing. And the teacher picks up from there. Everyone seems to be satisfied, even with what little I had said. Though, a few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glances at me. Could have gone worse. I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again. Which feels like a weird thing to do. The first row girl claps on this on this round with her one hand against her wrist that ends up ends in a bandaged stump. Makes me feel a little bad. We're going to be doing some group work today, so that will give you a chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine with me. That's good. You can work with Hakamachi, Hakamichi. Sorry, she's the class representative. She can explain everything you might want to know. And who else would be able to do that better, right? How can I know? Deidre passes out the day's assignments and announces that we will be working in groups of three! It hits me that I don't know who Hakamichi is. So, Deidre seems to catch my helpless expression. Oh, right. Hakamichi is uh, right there. Shizune Hakamichi. Oh, hello. Alright, so let's see. Anything visible about you? Your hands seem huge. You look evil. I don't know. Something about you looks fucking... You look mean. I, maybe it's the eyebrows, the huge blank looking eyes. The fact that it looks like she has a gun. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't trust you immediately. As he calls out her name, the cute, bubbly-looking girl with bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. I take a seat next to her by the window. Hey, I guess you're Hakamichi, right? It's nice to meet you. Oh. <laughs> what? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. It's nice to meet you, too, but... Oh, <laughs> no, got the fucking line through the word. That's clever, I like that. I'm not Hakamichi, I'm Misha. This is Hakamichi's 
Chi-chan. Hmm? Ah, the sign language one. Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her. The one I saw using sign language before. It looks like she has been staring at me the whole time. She nods once nonchalantly to show that she acknowledges my presence, but only barely. She has short, yet carefully neatly brushed hair. A pair of oval-shaped glasses balanced on the tip of her dainty nose, a dark and dark blue eyes that seem to alternate every few seconds between analytical and analytical and slightly bored. It's nice to meet you. Oh, that was probably sign language. She immediately looks at Misha, who smiles and makes a few quick gestures with her hands. Oh. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it would appear that she's deaf. Probably. Presumably, we- oh! Do I see a device in her ear? It looks like it, so yes. I might have to get hearing aids soon. That... Honestly... is kind of worrisome to me. Hakamichi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. I start to wonder if the teacher was messing with me, saying things like, You'll be able to talk to people, and who better to explain things to you? I can see you're a little confused, right? Right? But I understand why you would think that I am I was Shichan. Shichan is deaf, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth to her. I'm like an interpreter! She says it's nice to meet you too. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Shi-chan, of course he is. If he wasn't, he wouldn't be standing up there for no reason, right? Right? Why, uh, she, she, very affirmation savvy. He seems like a very interesting person, doesn't he? What? I'm confused. I'm sure I will figure it out. Perhaps it's a behavioral thing. We knew there was going to be a new student, but we didn't know you would be here today so soon, Hee-chan, right? What is happening, Hee-chan? Yeah, it fits, doesn't it? Did I say that out loud? It's just a surprise. I've never liked that nickname. I don't really see how. It fits! You look just like I imagined! What? Little, oh really, expression. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you look just like a He-chan! I wonder why everyone seems to think so. Hakamichi taps her fingers on the desk to get Misha's attention. They gesture back and forth to each other excitedly, their hands a blur. Oh, oh, oh. Misha seems a little overwhelmed. <laughs> Sorry about that. Shichan wants you to know that she's the class rep, so if there's anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. Do you like the school so far? We can sh- whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just don't like it when the text moves without my consent. We can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and familiarize yourself with it? He just stumbles with a hard word a bit. Maybe it's making it stick out like in her otherwise fluid translation. Thanks, that'd be pretty helpful. Yeah, I can, uh, I just kind of came straight to class today. <laughs> That's no good! You should always try to learn as much as you can about where you're going to go before you go there. Not just with school, either. Always, even if it's a trip to the convenience store. Really, Shichan? <laughs> learn about where you're going? I guess I didn't bother to do that, or just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this, even if I committed myself to go along with it half-assedly, but anyway. I don't say anything, but Misha signs something that ends in a shrug. What was that? Seems like it was about me. I feel like slumping over in my seat, both of them are smiling. 
But that shrug hit me unexpectedly deeply. You look down, are you okay? Don't take it the wrong way, please. I hate it when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things, by asking. Asking for help is perfectly normal, as much as needing help. Stop looking like you just failed a test. <laughs> All right. Oh, and another thing. You don't have to call Shichan something so formal like Hakamichi or class rep all the time. Just call her Shichan. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe that's too casual. Maybe Shizune. Would that be more appropriate? Yep, yep, Shizune is fine. <laughs> okay, that'd be a lot easier for me. I feel a lot more at ease. Both of them seem so friendly. So I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier. Especially about Shizune, who I assumed would be all business. Well, she still seems like that, just less so, I guess. Hmm? Oh, right, we haven't even touched the assignment. We should start work now, or Shichan will get mad. The assignment is also kind of long. So, we should start now if we want to finish it before the end of class. <laughs> that too! <laughs> oh, grumpy Wumperson. Shizune glares at the two of us impatiently. I don't need to know sign language to understand that. Okay, okay, now I get the message. After class, we can take a walk around the grounds together. It's a nice day today, okay? Simon is actually very challenging to get through, combining aspects of being both difficult and unnecessarily long. Nice curtain transition. Still, we finish it a few minutes later, a few minutes earlier than anyone else in the class. Despite our late start, Shizune and Misha are really capable. They're quite different, though. The class rep is as calm and professional as she looks, while Misha is a lot more playful and girlish, not to mention a little more easily distracted. To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about that. The clock tower begins to ring, signaling the end of the period. Time for lunch. Without knowing what to do, else to do, I follow Misha, who is beckoning me into the hallway and down the stairs. Well, I guess lunch will be the next episode then. Uh, that was our first class. We got to meet everyone, but we've got to see everyone, but we got to meet <laughs> we got to meet Misha, Shizune, and, uh, of course, the teacher, Mr. Whatever-the-fuck. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a pretty good uh, first episode. I still don't like that creepy-ass painting in the hallway. That shit's freaky. I don't like it. Mwah. So, that was this episode of Katawa Shoujo. On the next one, we will have lunch. Riveting shit. But until the next time, I've been the trend of professional decker link. You are not. And I will see you then. Bye, everyone. <laughs>